Hello, everyone. I am Captain Robertson. I am a clinical psychologist and I am our behavioral health clinic OIC. This is Specialist Armstrong. He's my NCOIC. In front of you or next to you, you have a few papers. So the first one is this one right here that says behavioral health groups classes. So take a look at those. And if you find that any would be interesting or helpful to you, write them down on this little piece of paper with your name and contact information. There's a line for email, put whatever contact information that we can reach you on. So whether it's like IBCO, DSN, um, if you can get your email, that's fine. Um, or even just like signal number. Um, yes. Okay. So the next thing is there are these, it looks like a little prescription pad. These are resources from the VA. They're apps that you can download for free on the front. There's, um, there's a bunch of different apps that help with sleep, mindfulness, breathing. There's some parenting ones, um, things like that. And on the back, there's some post-deployment resources also, and they should all be free. All right, the next thing that is in front of you or next to you is this ACE card. Take a look at it. There is our contact information on the bottom and there's a QR code that links you to the uh, website that the VA has that has suicide hotline numbers and also it has a chat. So we can't always get like the 800 number or whatever and our soldiers can't always call, but there's a chat so they can use that here. Um, so on those lines, take a look at your ACE card. Can anybody explain to me what ACE is? Suicide checklist. A suicide checklist. Okay. Tell me, tell me what it is. Like, tell me what it stands for. What you're supposed to do when somebody says, I want to kill myself, ask them, care about them, and then take them somewhere where they don't kill themselves. Perfect. Very good. Okay. Good, good. Who can tell me about ask? Awesome. Okay. So perfect. Yes. Thanks, Tom. Yes. So um, when you are concerned about a person, what are the indicators that make you concerned about them? Exactly. Change of behavior is a really big one. Um, and that can go whatever direction the change is. If they're like, usually a person who's pretty introverted, like kind of to themselves. And then all of a sudden they're like out partying or something. That's still a change versus the like typical one that we think of where like they're really happy. And then all of a sudden now they're really sad. So any kind of change in behavior is important to take a look at. Also, we have candy for answers. I think that that's part of the problem. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so when we ask, um, when we ask somebody how they're doing things like that, because we're concerned about them and when you're specifically concerned that they might hurt themselves or kill themselves, something that's really important is to use very blunt language. You don't have to like, like beat around the bush, things like that. Um, there's a common misconception that if you say suicide or you say, are you thinking about killing yourself, that that's going to give them the idea to kill themselves. The research shows that that is not true. Um, if they are having thoughts about killing themselves, they're going to have thoughts about killing themselves regardless of if you say it or not. And if they're not thinking about killing themselves, you saying it is going to be like, Oh no, but thanks for asking. So it's not, you're not going to make them kill themselves by using blunt language. Does that make sense? Okay. Also the language we use around suicide is really important. So the, the words completing suicide, or I'm sorry, um, completing suicide is less stigmatizing than committing suicide. Committing is like associating it with a crime. Um, we don't want to do that because if somebody does complete suicide, think about the stigma that is left for their family. So if it's associated with like, oh, they committed suicide, like they committed a crime, there's less support typically for the family than if somebody died by a heart attack versus somebody died by suicide. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Can somebody tell me about care? Awesome. Exactly. Candy. 
go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, how do you show that you're listening? Anyone? Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Can somebody tell me the difference between empathy and sympathy? <laughs> you want to get it? <laughs> Keep forgetting. Go. <laughs> 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 You're gonna explain next. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. That was lovely. Good, good, good. Yes. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, okay, awesome. Very good. Ask him how he's feeling about it now. <laughs> And then take him and escort him over to the yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, true. <laughs> yes, good. Okay, now tell me about the escort part of ACE. That's where you find your buddy a resource such as yourself. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> oh, he's on top of it now. We shamed him. <laughs> good. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, in this setting, of course, you know where I am, or if you don't know where I am, I'm over there at the clinic. I have a sign that says behavioral health. Um, and our contact information is at the bottom of the, the ACE card. Um, if we weren't in this setting, what would you do? Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Which if you scan that QR code, you can find it. Or if you just Google suicide prevention hotline, it'll pop up. Good, good. Does everybody understand ACE? Anybody have any questions? The only thing I can say is just from, from personal experience is understanding about like that bluntness. Yeah. You can read a lot, of person, a lot about a person by just asking them that question. Because I got asked it a bunch of times, and they're like, oh my god, no. And they're like, oh. <laughs> like, okay, no problem. That bluntness is pretty, pretty effective instead of trying to just beat around the bush. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because sometimes people will say pretty vague statements around like, I don't want to be here anymore. Or like, like life is too hard to live. Like, like kind of vague statements where it could just be like a, like an existential, like crisis sort of a thing versus like, no, I want to kill myself. Those are two very different things. So asking very specifically and bluntly can be really important. Absolutely. All right, we're going to practice. Now we are going to ask for volunteers. Okay. We are very concerned about my NCYC Specialist Armstrong. He's been acting real strange lately. So who wants to be his battle buddy and ask care and escort? <laughs> so I've noticed that you're acting, you, your performance at work has been off. Um, you've been late and you, you're not getting your assignments done, so I'm concerned about you. So, really, are, are you feeling okay? Is there something that's distracting you outside of work or in work? Like, what, what's going on with you? I just don't feel like I have a purpose anymore. Really? Have you have you talked to anyone else about this? No, I kind of just feel like I'd be a burden on anybody else I really kind of talk to. Okay, what, what makes you feel like you don't have a purpose? What's changed? Um, just knowing like I'd kind of just add more to people's plate. I don't really talk to my family anymore. I just kind of feel distance from everybody. Yeah. Um, have you had thoughts of hurting yourself or doing something that, you know, is, is extreme? Um, I have. You have? Okay. Um, would you like to talk to somebody like a... Uh... Pause. So that was awesome. So he gave you kind of a, you had a question that was a little bit more vague, like, like thoughts of hurting yourself or something extreme. So he gave you a, I have. So then this is the perfect spot to give a pretty blunt question. Okay, are you thinking about killing yourself or something very specific so that you kind of know what you're talking about? So, so far, super great. Try that next. Are you thinking about killing yourself? <laughs> Good. I have had thoughts of wanting to kill myself. This. Okay. Um, awesome. So now at that point, you know, he's thinking about killing himself. So this is something where um, you ask around 
what's going on with that. So like, okay, like, have you thought about how you would kill yourself? When would you kill yourself? Kind of specifics so that you get how serious it is. So you see how much time you have. Okay. So how, how would you thought about killing yourself? Good. Um, like when I go on, I just kind of think about the easiest way would be when I go on mission, just, I mean, we have to carry a pistol off base, so just using kind of the means that I have. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty serious. And I'm worried about you as your supervisor and definitely one, I want to see you get better. We definitely have to get you help. So. Uh, are you willing to come with me to talk to somebody who can deal with this a little bit more professional? I think I can do that. Good job. That was that was really good. Um, any observations about that? What'd you guys think? Everyone thought it was perfect or awful? Oh wait. Wasn't willing to go. He escorted somewhere. Exactly. So. <laughs> so if you are in a position of command, you can command direct for behavioral health evaluation. Um, if you are not, you can't make somebody engage in behavioral health. What you can do though is contact their chain of command of like, hey, I'm really worried about them. They told me that they were going to kill themselves. Um, and then you can go from there. If they're worried about um, like, like confidentiality or what's going to happen as far as their career and things like that, it is more important that they stay alive at this point. So um, there's different options as far as like behavioral health versus chaplain, things like this. So um, does anyone know the differences between limits of confidentiality for chaplain versus behavioral health? Okay, I'll tell you. So um, for behavioral health, we have limits to confidentiality. So if somebody comes in and tells me that they wanna hurt themselves or kill themselves, I'm gonna assess how serious this is and what we need to do about it. If this is a safety issue and they can't keep themselves safe, I need to let command know and then we need to figure out how to keep them safe. So whether that means that they need to go to a higher level of care, whether that means we can treat in place but we need to monitor pretty closely, things like that, that's what we assess in that. Um, also, behavioral health, I'm a mandated reporter, which means if there's any abuse issues, I need to let somebody know. If somebody tells me that they are going to hurt somebody else or kill someone else, it's very similar. I need to figure out, is this a serious threat? If so, we need to make sure everybody is safe. So those are some of my limits to confidentiality. Chaplain doesn't have to say anything. So if someone is concerned because they don't want like more people involved, things like that, most important is that they're alive. So if they're comfortable going to chaplain with this, that's great. Um, if they let somebody know and you're concerned about their safety, get command team involved because then we can get resources, keep them safe. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Okay, cool. All right. Any other questions about that? Well, if so the authorities find out about this, if they get brought into it, it's going to be a different ball game too. Yeah, absolutely. I know suicidal soldiers as a police officer, and it's like, yeah, like different, different set of rules, kind of like you're coming with me no matter what. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so that is a really good point. Also, as from like behavioral health lane, I always encourage if they come on their own there's a better outcome typically than if they're forced to come in. Um, so I always encourage like, hey, if you can come on your own, like we can handle this a little bit smaller versus if you're not gonna come in on your own and it's life or death, then it's gonna get a lot bigger. But yeah, absolutely. Can you say more about that too? Like what that- I, I'm a state trooper here Fort Drum. Yeah. We deal with soldier population constantly for the whole plethora of you know, COVID. Mental health is a is a huge one, and if a soldier expresses a suicidal ideation, we cannot. It, it's very hard to take it lightly. Yeah. Um, if it's credible, now it's just word of mouth. Like, hey, his friend said that he said something, but if I have a text message or social media post that is very indicative that that person has a desire, intent to commit suicide, then they're going to. We try to cope. I don't say. Uh, we try to talk them into coming with us as sure. cooperatively as possible. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're not leaving until they 
that if it's handcuffs yeah. to the hospital. Yeah, whatever. absolutely. Yeah, and typically if you're dealing with somebody who really doesn't want to come in, them being alive is more important. So when it gets to that, it gets to that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we talk about suicide a lot because that seems to be like you know the big thing on our mind. But the one thing that we don't talk about a lot is, and you brought it up, but uh, the steps of what if he doesn't want to kill himself? He wants to kill a whole bunch of other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you still follow follow those same rules? Similar, except the escort isn't necessarily to me. Um, I do assessment and evaluation around, um, around like homicidal ideation. So suicidal, suicidal ideations versus homicidal ideations. If they are wanting to kill or hurt someone else, then it's a different process, but it's the same idea. We need to keep everyone involved safe. So, um, typically that's when like, like MPs get involved, things like that. Um, as far as my lane goes, I have a duty to warn. It comes from Tarasov. So if someone tells me that they're going to hurt somebody else or kill somebody else, I am legally mandated to let that person know, to warn them so that they can get themselves safe. And then I need to let somebody else know so that they can stop the person from killing or hurting someone else. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No? All right. Nicely done, team. Take those ace cards, put them in your pocket. If you want more, I have a bunch of them. And go have a wonderful day.